This is a Decentered Media vlog with me, Rob Watson. Conversations about community media. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media. Hello, it's um, Friday the 26th of November and it's a grey murky day here in Evington in Leicester. Uh, I'm Rob Watson and I'm joined today by Helen Petman who's Hello. the editor of the Evington Echo and Helen's going to show us around and we're going to talk about the Echo and friends of Evington and what you do and how you got into it. Yeah, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, which, which direction are we going to go well, first? We're, we're, I, we'll look at this notice for a minute because okay. you notice that we've got had some input into um, designing our um, notice boards that, with the that council. That says ev- evingtonecho.co.uk. Yes, and we had some input into um, what pictures and, and, and what we wanted on, on this design. So, I, I mean, that was one of the pictures we supplied, for example. So, <coughs> and, and so, you know, so having got a, a community newspaper, it, it does do some good. <laughs> so tell us, t- how, how, how did the Echo start? It, well, it's, and how did you get involved? It started 40 years ago um, when um, a community tutor and a librarian decided it would be nice for the... Um, Evington to have a community newspaper, which is what they called it then. It's more a magazine, really. And um, so they put some notices around a few houses and called a meeting. Oh, hello, Hard. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you. Fine. Somebody calls the new label. Yes, yes. For a riot. Pardon? For chaos. Oh yes, it should be good. Yes. Yes. Your dog looks very tame and nice now. She's having lessons and she's actually picking up some of. Oh good. When she's not too excited, and then it's all out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Look after her. Yeah. Right. So so um. So it was a newspaper stroke magazine. Yes, it's a, a newspaper stroke magazine. Are they called a meeting? And uh, at the meeting, they um, found that the tutor and the librarian weren't there. So they were about to say, bye-bye, we can't do this. Nobody knows anything about doing any newspapers or anything. And then um, a lady called Betty Best said, hold on a minute, maybe we can do something. And um, it was remarkable that they came up with the first issue which came out in July, June um, 1981 and they actually said that the purpose of, of the magazine right there on the first edition that has actually gone on for 40 years and, and they're, they're amazed themselves <coughs> the people. there's still Angela who was the secretary right at the beginning and did a lot of work, and she's absolutely amazed that it's continued so long. And what, what was that purpose? Um, the purpose was um, uh, uh, threefold: New- local news, local opinions, um, uh, uh, clubs and societies, and uh, um, and and um, uh, profiles of. Um, people to show what what great things they're doing so it's kind of a notice board but also pre-facebook discussion forum yes yes <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i suppose that's made that's that's kind of where things have changed really now a lot of people use social media uh so so why is a a, a magazine and, yeah, and but, newspaper still important um because there's still a lot of uh, this area's got the most elderly people of anywhere in in Leicester and uh, they're not used to using social media so they they actually rely on the on, the, on a magazine coming through and now because social media is so vast and you can't always find local news in it anyway 
it still serves a purpose. It, it went through a stage when you thought, well, the internet is going to destroy this, but now I don't think it will. I'm going to pause for a second because you're facing me and we're putting away from the microphone. So I'm just going to do it. All right. It's just a, I always have to remember this is that kind of, it should be you know, as close. There we go. That's better. So, yeah, yes. So we can do so that. So now we're passing the library. Okay. Which we have had a meeting to discuss. So. Um, working, a community working with the librarians, but we haven't, we haven't, it just takes forever for the council to actually do anything. So it's, in, it's uh, this is on the common, I didn't know there was a name no, of this a road used, here. Well, yes, because it used to be common land. Ah. And what they did was they said, um, I'll tell you what we'll do. Well, uh, because we want to put a road and take over the common land, we'll give you Evington Village Green, and and that can be your space instead. But they have, but uh, it's not a village green as such. No. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, what is it? <laughs> well, it's um, it's a, it's like a, a bit like a mini park, but without as much facilities as a, you'd expect in a main park. Right. And we've had to campaign like mad to get play facilities there. So just, just describe a bit more about Evington for us. What's, well, what's it's, good, it's, what's unique about... Well, it's, a, it? it's, um, it's not, not unique because um, there are about... There are about six little, what former villages are on the outskirts of the city, uh, Evington just being one of them, and it, it was a Anglo-Saxon origin, we think, or maybe earlier. We don't know. Um, yeah, the, the Anglo-Saxon names Rome. are on, aren't they? And yeah. the Norman names are white. B. So yes. you've got places like Harvey and yeah, yeah. Maybe. It's, it's, they're, they're the it's Anglo-Saxon ones are the ons. Anglo-Saxon yeah, in yeah. origin. Yeah. And, and um, and and then it's be and then in the sort of thirties, forties, it's uh, urbanised. Right. So, so we call it an urban area, but but it has a little bit of a village feel. Okay, I'm not very good at uh, 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 pointing the camera in the right direction no, and in the right this way. This is um, the main car park entrance to Evington Park. Okay. But I I thought we'd just walk along here cool. a little bit more. Because of um, uh, the good news we've got is that they are now starting to rejuvenate the um, youth club that's across the road. Right. Uh, there's a there's a, a charity set up to to do that, and um, so we in the last edition of our Echo, which we were very useful to be able to promote some of the activities they're doing. Let's have a look at... Yeah, it's in, in need of repair, isn't it? And yes, but they have done some repairs enough to open it again. And, and does Evington have... Um, you know, it's been a tough time over the last ten yeah, years you for... You might not need to walk too much this way. OK, it's up to you. So... Does, does Evington, has, has Evington got those social, civic, public amenities? Um, um, no, we, we've been campaigning for a long time to have a neighbourhood centre and we haven't got it here. Right. And, and it's a disgrace. <laughs> And, and so the sense, where, where does this, you know, your experience well, the, of the sense of community for, for Evington well, come from? Because, um, because we, we do loads of things as a community. We, we um, have, have lots of groups that meet and have always met. And, and it's, we've had two full pages of groups in the Evington Echo saying what what they're doing and where they are. And telling, telling people on a regular basis that they meet and yes. what they get up to, I mean, what the special events are. we have got a are. village hall that is run by a trust. Um, do you want to just walk into the park yeah. a bit? Dodging the uh, taxi drivers. This, this is um, 
what I call Alice in Wonderland territory <laughs> now. OK. <laughs> <laughs> because um, you've got the Mad Hatter's Tea Party here. Right. When they say there's no room here at all. And as you see, there's plenty of room. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's no imagination uh, rather than no room. Well, I think they would have the imagination, but they want to be the ones controlling it all. Right. And so, and that sense of independent community spirit is, is vital, isn't it? You know? Yes. It's, you're not, um, you don't want to, you know, it's, it's community groups can't thrive if they've not got a sense of autonomy. No, no. We can't thrive without a sense of autonomy. And um, because you can't, if, if they're calling all the shots, the council are calling all the shots through their council officers, then you can't have meetings to discuss the area or do anything. I, d I not particularly want to show the bin, I want to show the sign. So this, yeah. is, the, this is the scale of Edmonton Park. Yes. It's, it's quite a big park, isn't 40 it? 42 acres. I think it's 42 acres. And it? it's, <coughs> like m many parks now, there's a lot more rewilding takes place in the park, isn't there? And Yes, yes, they, they've been doing that. So there's areas where you've got the gardens, yes, which we'll hopefully yes. have a look at uh, and you can uh, tell and, us about. And of course we set up, as you know, we set up the Bloom Project. Yeah. Um, to, to be able to help in the park. But... Um, I switched sides because the microphone again. <laughs> and, and, and we had some success. Yeah. Had a hard campaign to get toilets. And right. they put all sorts of blocks there, like you, you've got to do a newt survey and right. well, there was never going to be any newts around there. No. <laughs> so that, all that was very frustrating. <coughs> I mean, it's, it, how would you describe it? Is it like an ordinary urban park or is it, is it a st it's, site yes. of scientific or heritage it, interest? It, or? It's got a lot of interest because it, it was a, an estate, yeah. a private estate, and um, it, it, the, at one stage it was owned by quite a famous botanist. Right. So there's quite quite some very nice trees here still. Right. That um, uh, and I think you'd think of it as a, a nice park for trees and and leisurely walking around, and we're still trying to keep the herbaceous going, but. It, it's not easy. No. They, they've got, um, they've started to move forward better with the bowling green now. <coughs> yeah, these things kind of went out of fashion, didn't they? I mean, you know, pubs had bowling greens and they were converted into car parks in the 1980s yes. and yes, all yeah. of those social spaces yeah. kind of, yes. people then had to set up special yes. members only clubs yes, so that you could go bowling and. It's kind of gradually now all being reintroduced back into our... Yes, so they've managed to go through the doldrums and yeah. come out again. So, so in a way, the, 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 the echo was told... You know, has gone back. through the doldrums as well. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's a, it, it kind of, I suppose you can look at it and see how our sense of community has changed over those 40 years. Yeah, it's um, changed and yet now it, it gives me goosebumps to think we're actually doing the same thing has actually happened in the first edition. Yeah. So describe that to us. What is it you're doing now that they did then? And, and Well, we're saying what we're about, quite clearly, and we're, we're, we're still saying what, what's going on in the local area in terms of clubs and societies. We still get letters in, um, which just come in from various people, no, fairly spotted, randomly. Spotted a tree. We can have a quick look at the tree. Is the, the, the remains of a tree which has been turned into a, it, a sculpture, which yes. is good yes. to look at. Yes. It, it's done by one of the officers in, in the. That's quite cool, actually, yes. isn't it? I've never yes. noticed this <laughs> this before. Yeah. So yeah, so that that kind of. I mean, I, I remember I I was in school in. The, the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. And um, so it was, um, 
it was at that time when all the shutters were going on the shops. Yeah. All the metal shutters, and this was in Liverpool, so you kind of Egbeth Road. And it's the same in Leicester along Narborough Road. Yeah. The shutters have never come down. No. And I think we're, we're kind of, the things that we kind of, we gave up at the time, oh, it seems too difficult to, to manage our parks and bowling greens and yeah. things like that. We, we were kind of now saying, we need our parks and bowling greens because <laughs> we don't have a strong sense of community if we don't have them. No, no. <coughs> so it's no, almost as if, right. you know, that, that intervening 40 years is, is, yes. is like a blip. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to thinking about community. Uh, so what, what kind of response do you get from people locally about you know, the, 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 uh, the stories that you run and the articles that you... Oh, um, you, you mostly, it, it, they've got so used to it that, that you, I don't get an awful lot of response. <laughs> <laughs> but I certainly would if we stopped. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they take it for granted? Uh, <coughs> Yes, yes, they do a bit. Yes, because it's it's just gone on f for such a long time that it's sort of what we do, but yeah. other areas don't do it. So they start to notice that other areas aren't doing it. Yeah. And so if you were looking for somebody to come in and you were training them up um, yeah. to, to take on your role... Uh, yeah, well, that, this is why we've had to... Uh, we were trying to campaign for a space in this house here um, but we, we were unsuccessful and why we're looking now at um, that carers direct building that I showed you so you've got support so we so we're getting support from from, from a local business from a local business uh, and um, also the local pub has said they'd support us too because Friends of Evington is a charity we 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 became a charity in in 2012, but it, it wasn't easy, and and sometimes I regret we made that move. Why why is that? Because of um, people feeling the echo was being taken over, and um, and then people wanting to. To, to be on, to be the decision makers for the charity that we didn't want, and and, that, uh, and trying to run it democratically, when you when there's people you don't want there, it's difficult. Because that 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 sense of ownership and accountability is very important for any any community organisation, isn't it? Yes. You know, and it's like how I mean, it's 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 um, everybody's always prone to um, uh, argument and disagreement. Yes. So you, what, what have you learnt about being a... Um, how do you bring people together rather than... Um, what's your take on that? Uh, well, I, th I think in the end, we, I've been through the let's have a row business. Yeah. And it doesn't actually work. And that... Um, the answer is um, to to, uh, to to sideline the people you don't want, really. Right. <laughs> In a nice way. In, as nicely <laughs> as you can. And, and quietly and as you quietly, can. Quietly and just just so, don't work with them. So that you so you have to work out why and how people are motivated to yes to volunteer and or, or yes or, or uh, particularly if they belong to a different organisation and and want to expand their organisation then then the echo is quite useful to them. And yeah. You don't want them taking it over. So you you're there to promote the interests of. Uh, uh, the, uh, yes. Rather than somebody else. Yes, you know, some we, other, we, yeah. we've changed it into more of an environmental um, newspaper now, more more that focus. So what? Which what, it what, had a bit before, but not so much as it does now. And how, how's that going? How's that? Oh well, well there was this COP twenty two. I was able to get some really good um, reports on what the schools were doing. But, and uh, uh, and how they and so our campaign is a little bit to try and persuade schools to to um, teach children about the environment and 
and all the issues involved and and but to do it in a practical way and definitely have a school garden now i'm just following you and we've just walked through part of the garden so do you want to go double back and you can tell me a bit about it well this was the garden that we we did take on to to, um to manage but but um the trouble with with um working with with these parks people is they're all horticulturalists so they don't let you make mistakes and that's frustrating <laughs> and and you've got to bring people in who are, learn, uh, different uh, who are learning at yeah. uh, different levels so yeah you know so what what how again how do you <coughs> what's the best way that you figured out how to be uh, to move away right to to um uh, there's only so much you can do yes to, to, to say right um, we, we're um, we, we're fortunate enough to be able to give them some money yeah so they can plant some more trees there and but uh, I think they're going to have to do it themselves but we will work with another organization called LEV which is Leicester Environmental Volunteers it's just, it's what I told you before, really. There's different p- parts of the council that you can work with and there's parts that you can't. Yeah. And and it's, it's that interaction with people who um, ha- have a different area of expertise, should we say, who um, are maybe see things in a different light <laughs> because they have different expectations and <coughs> kind of different set of priorities so it means yes. is it i mean it's natural within human nature i'm, I'm being a, as diplomatic and generous as i can to everybody mm. well, let's, let's walk through this way for a little bit just to because <coughs> when you come here in the summer this is uh, this is very different isn't it it's, it's interesting to Ex- see it in well this. except they've chopped down all the um all of it at the minute and right. going and they say they're going to replant it but nothing's happened Nothing yet. Nothing's yet, no. So And we didn't well we sort of got a say because um he wants to put jasmine all along and I said well, well let's have some clematis as well and he's agreed. But yeah. I mean that's just me and him. You yeah. know, it's not like you can have a community discussion about it. Yeah. And and people Part of the job is you're not you're not just running a garden. You're it's it's community. It's bringing people together. Yes. So it can't be autocratic. No, no, and that's the issues that we've got. Yeah, because yeah. you've meant you've we've chatted before about the idea of leadership, and and where people how you lead in a community, which is sometimes about letting people get on with it. Yes, and making mistakes and saying, "Well, would you like to do this <coughs> bit?" and "How would you like to do it?" and it might not then fit in with the rest of the the garden. You know? Right, but but then that could that be seen as being you know Helen's empire, autocratic? You know, do it as I want it doing. Yes, yes, that is also the issue, <laughs> uh, and, and it doesn't quite work because I'm trying to fit in with other with them as well, and it doesn't quite work. What What do you think is the midpoint? How do you think that is is kind of um, um, uh, because because it's not going to, that problem is never going to go away, is it? You know that's that that kind of problem no. of community organising. No, what we what we're th- always going to be. I, what I think we should do is work with the maintenance p- department of um, parks and not the development. Right. So you have a different type of conversation with the people that you're yes, you're working talking with. about maintenance. Yeah. Yes. Where to, where to next? Where are we going next? I'm sorry, um, this, is, this is a bit I of think, a whistle-stop tour, yes, but it's... Uh, yes, I think we have to go back <coughs> and walk around uh, the, the, the village green. Yep. And, and to see um, the activities on the other side. So one of the other things that you've got the advantage of is you do have a public voice with yes, the Echo yes. and the website and the social media. Yes. And you, you, you're you starting to develop and think about how you use your well, social we're, media we're going and your website. To, we're actually going to change the website quite considerably. Um, and we've got a, a, new, a trustee who's working on it at the minute. 
So what, what's, the, what's the kind of general idea that you've asked them to think about? <laughs> well, it, it's, he, it's, it wasn't my idea. It's Jeff's idea, really. You met Jeff. Um, to, to make... Uh, to keep the echo go, uh, road site going until we're ready to move everything over. Yeah. And then we move over all our past editions of the echo, as many as backwards we think. Yeah. And, um, a- and call it a Friends of Evington website. Right. That includes the echo. Yeah. So right. we're, we're sort of thinking in terms of, well, we've got two major projects, which is the Evington Echo and Evington in Bloom. Yeah. And that would um, allow you to... Um, it's kind of like get your voice... I mean, it's one of the things I'm, I kind of think... I, I kind of want people to know about what I am and what I stand for before they meet me. Yeah. Um, and, and so having... You know, pe- people will know and be able to form partnerships and build relationships as an organisation and as a group of individuals because you've you've been you've communicated clearly with people in advance yeah yes yeah. so hopefully <coughs> and, and now it, we've we have got uh, a, a board of trustees that um, are, are all keen on on the concept yeah which makes a difference so they and and are they happy to be putting themselves forward as the yes, the yes. voice of friends of friends of Evington and y- yeah yes they yeah. they help with that because it, it it's uh, you often find but some you of can them have some w- people come onto a board and say oh no I don't want to be on the, I don't want my photograph taken and shared I mean four of us are are keen on the environmental side right and um, two just the other two are keen on the uh, reporting side so we need to build up the reporting side a bit more but we feel if we move and have a space and and we can then train people yeah we we can build the reporting side up better and and because what we you know the challenge is we know what we've got to change about our the way that we live you know in terms of our carbon uh, uh, and the and the the, um, the ecolo- e- ecological challenges of that, but people yeah. often don't. They either don't join the dots up, or they're not confident about it. No, and it's no. it's how do we find ways to inspire no. people? Yes, it's, it's, you know we can't just assume that they're going to do it because they've read an article. It's like we've got to take it that step further and it, yes. educate people and. Yeah, it, we've realised that we we'll have to do quite a lot of training and yeah and talking. Yeah. To, to get people all okay about it, but so do you feel comfortable doing media stuff now, like this? <laughs> yeah, you sort of. Yes. <laughs> so, t- so, what have you got in your hand? So oh, you... oh, right. I've got. Um... So you've 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 gone out. Uh, so we we've been meeting across in the summer. We met occasionally for a coffee for yeah, some yeah. community reporters yes, events yes. we were running. Yes. And um, and you've been inspired to go and get an audio recorder. Yes. Uh, and I've set you the challenge uh, to, to, to go out and do some recording. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that will be useful. So what, in, what 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 was the penny that dropped that said I've got to get one of these recorders? Uh, because. I've, uh, because you need somebody in Evington that knows how to do it, and I and so I I need to train to be that person. I think. So you need uh, to, and so that I can then disseminate more the information. So you pass your learning on. Yes. And and you're not you know an expert. No, um, no. You're just an ordinary. It's so like the echo started in the beginning. Nobody's an expert, but but you build up expertise as you try to do things. And where would you so? But, where, but, where, it was, your, but you, having you, you t- explain a few things to me enables me to. But you've move got that, on. But you've got that thing of you like to try things out and discover things. So you've never done audio recording before. You've gone, oh, this this looks like a good idea, <laughs> and and you like to learn. Yes. Um, other people are maybe a little bit. Well, I don't need to. You know, it's a bit too much for me. <laughs> It's yes. a bit too complicated. I can't oh, learn yes, how yes, to do yes, that. But it won't be everybody. Right. But everybody can chat. Yes. 
Yes. So it, it, even if they're not, you, you know, collecting the audio and recording no, it no, and no. editing it and things like that, yeah. at least everybody can sit and have a conversation and yes, talk, and about, talk about, about their experiences. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then that becomes stories for the Echo, doesn't it? Yes. That yes. you can publish and yes. it's just another another way of talking to people. Yes. We've not really talked much about the uh, the, 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 the change of the seasons. We're, would you say we're in late autumn or early winter now? Um, uh, very late autumn, because I think... Oh, no, no, it's winter after the 21st of right. November. Ah, right, OK, yeah. so... Yeah. <coughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the, the heating's been on in my house now for the last couple of e- evenings. Yes, yeah, so um, it's getting darker every night, isn't yeah. it? And, and I've, I've had a shift of change recently, which is uh, my partner has to now start work at 6 a.m. Oh, or 6.30. You just have to think it's 7.30, really. Uh, well, yeah, so I said, no, I'll get up with you at 5 a.m. Oh, gosh. And I, I actually really like it. <laughs> but <laughs> I've got to be asleep by 10, a, 10 p.m. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. And it's like, normally I, I, I can't stand november december january february because yeah. it's so dark yeah but I'm, i've found the last couple of days actually having that being able to 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 kind of sit and have your coffee answer some emails do some reading uh jot some notes down or something um and then the light starts to kind of appear about 7 30 8 o'clock 8 a.m yeah, yeah and then i kind of came out this morning to get the bus to come up to evington yeah and it's like oh well I actually feel as if i'm and making use of the day. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah. 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 But you know, it's it's when you're in a city, it's you sometimes don't kind of feel that the seasons change in the same way. No. no. As when you do when you're living in the country. Yeah. Um, and I suppose Evington was, well, yeah, as you say, it was the villages on the outskirts of the town, which have been subsumed by. Housing estates. Yes, yes, and, and urbanised, so yeah. they're all part of the city, really. But it still has a strong identity as a village, doesn't it? I think it does, yes. I think you get that village feel a bit. Um, it's, it's very nice. I mean, um, we, we have improved considerably getting um, a, a cafe in the village now. That, that's made a huge difference because it's another place where people can go and meet and talk. And then... And, the, that, and that's just <coughs> over there. So there's a need for conversations. Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, um, uh, an old... Uh, there's one of the former trustees when we first started was very keen on uh, TEDx and actually went over to Vancouver and oh. trained um, for Leicester TEDx, which we've now got. Wow. So, but he's... So, so you have a TEDx in Evington? No, I, oh. I wanted that. And, he's, <laughs> and I said to him all the time, we must get local TEDx groups going. Yeah. But... Um, by that stage, he'd handed it over to other people who, who wanted it more a big event thing. So I don't know. We're a bit far away because it's on the other side of the road. Yes. But the, 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 so that's the cafe over yeah. there. So. And um, sadly, this shop has now can't afford the rent, so they're closing. Yeah, it's like Been a there for a long time. I suppose the the, the online shopping yeah um, shift and the the supermarkets have really the out of town supermarkets have really shifted. Yeah, how high streets. Yeah, and um, and they as you see with this notice here, it, it's um, it's uh, our charity helping promote it and get the plants and pay for the plants, but she's been looking after it. Let's get a bit closer. And, and it, as you go along, you, you'll see a number of them. And um, in front of the cedars, I think we vastly enhanced the look with these containers along the front. 
with with uh, perennials. And, it, and it's the little things that let people know that the the neighbourhood or the village is being looked after, and that people do yes. care about it. Yes. yes yeah. You, yes. you can't just I don't know drive past and, and drop your your fast food wrappers outside and but they skid still around. Is that still the... <laughs> yeah. we, we, We've um, got a very high proportion of schools in this area too. So there is quite a lot of litter dropped. Right. It's not always the school children that's no. dropping it. But. So, and that's, that in front of us, just on the other side of the road, is the Methodist Chapel? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Are we going to...? They, they, um, they, they will be helpful to us, but they like to keep themselves um, to themselves quite a lot. Yeah. We have had an event there in the past. I suppose it's it's kind of having the confidence and... Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we've kind of lived through... I was thinking about this this morning when I was, yeah. I, I was getting the bus in. We've lived through a period where things have been quite chaotic. Yeah. And I think having that structure and... Uh, maybe I'm getting a bit older, but that structure and confidence to know that, you know, our churches and our community groups and our libraries are going to be around. Yes, yes. That's you know, right. in the future, rather than yeah. merely, yeah. you know, kind of, whoops, <coughs> you know, just something that maybe one day is going to clear it away and yeah. turned into a bar or a, yeah. a bed shop or, you know, a car park or something, you know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, we want to know that these things are around and they're going to last. Y- yes, yes, uh, and... Uh, it does look like they, they will carry on. Yeah. And and we do open and take people around there for our heritage open days. But that's just once a year at the minute. So this is um High Street and um it it used to be full of little cottages like the one straight ahead. Right. Morning. Uh, which is a st- what they call a stockinger cottage and it used to be where they'd have the um, weaving looms in their houses right. and they come around and work in their own homes. And this is the only one that survived? It, it survived, yes. Yeah. But um, this, it was all along, but uh, yeah. there was a fire that would look dubious. Right. <laughs> and um, so... so um, there are people here along this high street that uh, are looking out for the road, for this particular road. So it has its own, they have their own little community along here too. It's sort of. Um, yeah. Um, this was our very first environmental pro- project back in 2007 when we um, worked with, with a different department of the council to um, develop this as almost as an afterthought to the play equipment because we were campaigning for that. And um, now it's sort of matured a bit more now and, uh, and, and developed a, a bit of garden along by the hedge as well. So it's finding every nook and cranny that you can. Yes, yes, that's right. This is a uh, bit that we've been developing for um, a wildflower meadow, just this little bit. And at the minute, we haven't been in trouble for the composting there. It's those little things, isn't it? That you know, it's the annoyance that you know you see regular reports now of people putting. The small gardens in the entryways between the houses, yeah, and they get told off by the council. And it's like, you know, come on, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're all right if there's, if there's, um, well, really, if they want to be environmental, they shouldn't be taking any of the debris off the site, yeah, and um, just quickly, this is uh, we're trying to develop this as a as our embankment, wildflower embankment. And Jeff's in charge of that a bit. And he's put some work in. 
Yeah, make it a more pleasant place for people to walk along, I suppose, rather than yes, really. just being at the side of the road. Yes. I mean, there's <clears throat> when you come through Leicester and you realise how how much of it lacks trees. Yes. You know, there's there's whole avenues. I was walking through Braunston the other day. Yeah. And there's, there's actually along people's there's, there's big driveways in front of people's houses and big, you know, it, it's those 1930s council estates. Mm. But there's hardly any trees there, you know, and you're kind of thinking you could yeah, yeah. double and treble the number of trees in Leicester quite easily. And then everything that goes with that in terms of, as you say, kind of community gardens. Yeah. So this, tell is, um, this is our best project, which because um, we um, work with the council. So the council got the, the war memorial cleaned and um, relayed the paving, and then we and we got so, uh, some funding to to get a, a carved bench, and um, we also have in which one one of these we, we buried past echoes in there, so <laughs> so people can find them in a hundred years or so time, maybe, and. Um, we also, the council have um, done a lot of work with, with spring bulbs, so we, we got a prize for that. <laughs> so this is where they do a bit of gardening in the streets and things. And, and they have a up there they have their own community set up with a little garden they look after. Yeah. So it's sort of like um, this side, you, you, you've got other little groups, other groups working. The uh, village hall, as I said, has its own trust. Yeah. And. Um, and if everybody does a little bit... They help... Well, Chris, who's the chair, is also uh, helping with the delivery of the echoes. He's the lead man yeah. in delivering the echoes. So a huge help, really, for the echo. Because um, getting it out is it's quite a big job. Yeah. And now, this time, for the next edition, looks like we've got enough deliverers. Right which is a very good move. So they, they've had a lovely garden there, but the council said that they were encroaching on the footpath, so they've had to take it all down and start again. Gosh, <laughs> wow. And then just further down here, we've got um, uh, another community around the, the local church, which has been here for at least 800 years and was probably of Saxon origin. Yeah. So it's, it's quite a beautiful church. We wanted... Um, there's been... Um, it took um, nine years of campaigning to get this little pull in here. I suppose that's the the kind of thing that a parish council would look after in a village. Yeah. I um, mean, really, they should get rid of this visibility block, really. Yeah. Because it's a bit dangerous. But, but then if you straighten the road out, it becomes a rat run. Yes. Um, yes. Whereas it, with, with it, you know, it's, it's moderately speed at the moment. Yeah. Well, it's this area that hasn't... Uh, continued with the ring road round right. Leicester, so that's why it's becoming a bit of a rat run. And, and Google, you know, the, the, the online maps, they tend to pull people across, you know, they say, oh, you can divert from the main road, so as the, the main roads become more congested, the, the, the uh, sub-roads become yes. busier as well, that's why the low traffic neighbourhoods are, are quite important. Yes. Okay, we're we're getting up to forty minutes of our walk. All right, so, yes. so um, I, I need to show you the pièce de résistance. What what we've saved what the best till last. We saved the best till last. Wow. 
Um, and that is to go and look at a site called Piggy's Hollow. Well, by the name, it sounds, uh, it sounds brilliant. Yes. <laughs> well, it's, the name has come from a, a, a Victorian farmer who um, used to farm here with his pigs. And he used to smear the sides of the um, moat, because it was a, a, a medieval moated site. Yeah. As, and this is uh, probably not totally accurate, but um, is a reconstruction of what it might have looked like in, bit, in uh, medieval times. And of course, plenty of brambles for blackberry picking in the yes at the yes. end of the summer. Yes, there's probably too many brambles. <laughs> it's not too slippery, is it? No, no. And there you, you can see the moated site. Ah. You, you can see the moat, and it goes all the way round. So it's quite a big area. And um, Chris has keeps mown some of the platform, and he's been very sensible. He, he's one of our members too, and he, but he has um, worked with the conservation people, and, um, that, and, and so he doesn't really talk to the parks development so it's keep, it's keeping it um as yes. lively with with variety of yes flora to, and fauna. Uh, try and get as much flora and fauna yeah. in as possible but um i think there's a bit of joining up to do still here yeah with with um what we can do with um working with lev less environmental volunteers uh, because we're, this, we're all a bit fearful about some um, partnerships at the minute. Yeah, so we need to communicate better so that we're yeah. not as fearful. Yes. Right. Yes. So, so where that, that uh, we we took a long time to of campaigning to get that notice up to tell people well, a bit about what it's about. Let's finish off by having a look on that. We can go back through the churchyard. <laughs> So um, this is only part of the Arboretum, which is a, a huge area of trees that um, David Attenborough had a lot to do with getting established. Because, um, as you know, the Attenboroughs have lived around here in this area, went to the local scout groups and and um, so he, he's had quite a big input in getting the Arboretum going and it's got a huge variety of trees in there. Cool. Right, where so, can people get in contact with you? Uh, what, through... Um, through the, through the, the website through, address for the Echo? Uh, no, well, they can use that or, or they, at the minute and we'll let them know later how to change that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put the... And can you remember what your Instagram and Twitter feed is? I... Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not using that very much. I think they just have to email. I'll put the link in, in the, uh, the, the notes the, the, the thing, yes, yeah. But yes. just Google search for Evington Echo, Leicester, is, and anything, anything about the Echo is going to come up, isn't it? Yes, so, yes, Yeah, yes. do it that way, okay. Yes. Helen's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And... Um, and we'll do it again in the spring. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, before, I didn't know there was so much here in Evington, so it's... Uh, no, no, it is a surprise. Yeah. I mean, they, they've called this area the, the, the uh, big secret.
of Evington. Well, when people have seen this, it won't be such a secret anymore. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> We've had various articles about it. In the end, Chris, who's an archaeologist, really, wants um, the university to actually do a dig yeah. so we actually know where the... Um, we know that there's been buildings here because we that they come to the, the the stuff comes to the top, but um, and it, and 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 it is a heritage site here, so he he he's been working with the heritage people, and and the good news is they do trust us more than they trust the kids. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. So, yeah. right, speak to you soon. <laughs> And I've fallen down there as well when it was a mud trap. <laughs> as we go along, I can show you um, the gravestone that's got the longest inscription in Leicestershire on it. How did somebody work that out? That's the interesting thing. Well, that, yeah. It must be a... A database of names on gravestones. And that, that's the parish centre, so that also gives another centre. Huh. It, that, that's the gravestone over there. Let's find out what it says. Oh, this one? This one, yes. This memorial of William Hall Orwell. Orwell. Of Stoughton. Is it Stoughton or Stoughton? It is, it's like co co Coton. So Stoughton. Stoughton, yeah. And of Anne Mary Elizabeth and Lucy, daughters of William Hallowell, and of Lucy, his wife. This stone is erected by... Oh, it does, it goes on. We'd be there for half an hour. Yeah, yeah, reading it all, yes. I, I, I have had it transcribed. Yeah, per, uh, that, that's leaving a permanent mark, isn't it? Really? Well, maybe not entirely permanent, but that's a, <laughs> that's a way to... Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, and uh, I think St Dennis is... Which one is St Dennis? I never knew there was a Saint Dennis. I suppose there's, a, yeah, there's yes, probably a Saint a, Roger a, a, and a Saint. Yes, he's a, a French Saint. He's... Yeah, there. That that's Saint Dennis there. Up there. You've been watching a Decentered Media vlog with me, Rob Watson. To find out more, go to decentered.co.uk or follow on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media.